Hey, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Cloud Ops Junction. So in this video, we will talk about Azure Virtual Machine. So uh, uh, in this entire video, we will talk about the uh, what is Azure Virtual Machine, how we can use it, what are its use case type, how we can uh, build it, how we can, I mean, how we can create it. Uh, moreover, we will talk about the deployment type, uh, how you can actually deploy a virtual machine uh, on Azure. Uh, like uh, on Windows and on Linux we will talk about the instances like uh, what is the size uh, what is Azure compute gallery images what are dedicated host uh, what is Azure spot uh, virtual machines what is Azure uh, Bastion we will talk about hybrid benefit as well reservations capacity reservations auto shutdowns uh, not in details if if not necessary but yeah definitely when we will be creating it uh, we will also be talking about these in in, in details we'll talk about uh, the availability set and availability scale we'll talk about the disk how we can manage the disk on uh, uh, how we can manage the virtual machine disk what are its type understanding the disk storage billing process also disk uh, redundancy options uh, deploying a ultra disk what is a premium ssd v2 what is the rs disk so a lot of lot more about encryption encryptions and other things also we'll also talk about the attaching uh, adding an external disk deattaching a disk extending a disk managing a storage we'll also talk about the networking i mean how we can put a static ip how we can set up a private ip what are the multiple ip we can set up uh, We'll talk about the creating DDoS protection plan, assigning public IPs, multiple NICs, how we can assign it. Uh, we will little bit talk about the uh, DNS, uh, Azure DNS, internal DNS. Uh, we will talk about the little bit about story uh, security uh, during it, and uh, we will talk about the updates and maintenance, how we can. Uh, update and maintain a virtual machines how we can monitor it how we can uh, backup uh, i mean how recoveries and backup uh, backup can be taken place or can be done on a azure virtual machines we'll talk about the infrastructure automation we'll try to deploy a virtual machines using a terraform which is a uh, very being uh, or a popular topic these days uh, if times allow or if uh, we have uh, if i mean we will also talk about the uh, cost optimizations how we can optimize or how we can best optimize our machines to get more out of it so without wasting any time let's jump into the uh, the little bit theoretical part of uh, your virtual b6 and then we will try to within this machines uh, within sorry uh, within this video we will also try to create a virtual machine and further with there will be a couple of more uh, videos that will talk up where that will that will cover the remaining topics that i have uh, that we have gone through okay so welcome to the cloud of junction so what is a azure virtual machine so azure virtual machine uh, is a on demand scalable computer resources that give you a more control over computing environment uh, that is created on azure so essentially uh, it's a virtual machine it's act like it's, it's a virtual machines not on your data center but it's in on cloud that is on azure cloud a, a virtual machines give you a feasibility of virtualizations without having a buy and a maintaining a physical hardware that's runs it and uh, moreover you still uh, still need to uh, i mean on the second part if i would say uh, you still have to maintain the virtual machines by performing tasks such as configurations patching installation softwares that runs on it it will be your responsibility the hardware part will be taken care by the microsoft so it's a basically virtual machines running on a cloud for the hardware cloud for hardware uh, azure will take the microsoft will take the responsibility however uh, for uh, for configurations like security patching installations of any software will be taken care by you or the administrators so when to use a virtual machines uh, azure virtual machines so there are different scenarios where you can use a virtual machine so deploying and testing so azure virtual machines offer a quick and easy way to create a compute 
uh, resource with a specific configuration as per the requirement and uh, you can deploy your code and you can start testing it so it's very easy gives a thumbs up okay and application in cloud so in case you want to scale up your on-demand applications or pay as you go in the model so suppose your uh, demand of an applications is not or is a predictable so uh, you can make economical sense to run it on virtual machines in Azure and you only pay for the virtual machines when you are actually using it so it make more sense it, it's a cost saving uh, it's a cost saving also uh, so yeah extending data center so seamlessly uh, connect your Azure virtual machines to your prim so virtual machines network can be easily connected to your organization to your on-prem data center so by creating express route and other different ways so we will cover that topic also why will why we will be covering the virtual azure virtual network so that an easy way if you have some of your virtual machines of uh, or some of your data center in your data center you're running some of their uh, server that cannot be moved to azure or, or you wanted to keep it for security purpose on your uh, on your data center so there is a way you can connect them and you can utilize and uh, use it consideration before creating a virtual machine so uh, what it is this what does it mean uh, what do I need thing what are the things that I need to take care before creating a virtual machine so basically this is the uh, nutshell uh, so first of all we will be requiring a resource name I mean uh, we have to a dedicated container name where uh, we put the uh, our all uh, conventional and uh, we need to have a dedicated container a resource group is a container where we can put our resources in it so it will be easy to manage so that is very essential while we'll creating a virtual machines the first thing we will be requiring a resource group name or resource name we need to have it we need to decide the uh, what would be the naming convention what we are, are going to put it on uh, when we will be creating it uh, second is the location so you have to choose a locations where you wanted to put your resources or your, your uh, virtual machines or anything that needs to be uh, stored so a location should be required uh, VM size you need to select the right size based on your workload and ensure the cost efficiencies are performed so that is also very important if you are uh, choosing a, a large instance that you are not being used that is not being used uh, by you or the performance so it will cost you extra so choosing the right VM size is very very important while creating a virtual machine so operating system you have to pick an operating system best best suit for your applications and uh, Azure uh, do support Linux Windows and other operating system as well like Ubuntu and uh, CentOS like configuration so uh, you have to create a plan or you have to post creation or configuration such as setting up the networking and installing software that that is also you need to uh, take care now uh, related resources considering additional resources like disk you I mean while you're creating uh, a virtual machine a disk needs to be created an IP address automatically uh, created there will be a security group and uh, there will be uh, a vnet that will be created during you have to create it during the creation of uh, a virtual machine so these are some basic uh, considerations you have to uh, you have to think before creating a virtual machines whether you wanted to keep your keep a public IP on your virtual net I mean on, on your uh, virtual machine or not uh, what would be the disk size that you wanted to allow what would be the configuration of your machine so these are the basic uh, uh, consideration or these are the basic uh, things that you have to take care before creating a virtual machine that should be in your mind and how you should create it right so let's move further understanding cost and part of a virtual machine so uh, let's let's talk about uh, this a little bit so when we are creating a virtual machine uh, you also create a several resources related to it uh, of them come with their own cost so let me break down and into a couple of things so virtual networks uh, virtual networks enable communications with other resources so uh, you, you need to require uh, this virtual network that uh, will be created 
while creating a virtual network there is no separate cost for uh, creating NICs however there are limitations like uh, how many NIC you can use on a virtual machines uh, let's talk about a network interface card called as NIC a NIC uh, connects to a virtual network uh, for the communication so there is a no separate cost for NIC but however there are some limitations how many NIC that you can use on a based on VM size so that needs to be considered IP address uh, IP address yes there are IP address I mean there are two kinds of IP address internal uh, sorry uh, public and private so public IPs do consider uh, pricing for that but private IPs uh, you don't have to pay anything for that uh, security groups security groups so uh, security groups are uh, for managing the network traffic and uh, from uh, from one VM to another or from one network to another uh, you might need to open a port 22 for SSH access or you might to block a traffic to internet uh, you want to uh, or, or maybe you wanted to block uh, port 80 uh, for any reason so you can do it by putting a network security group uh, to control traffic on your virtual machine so there is no additional cost uh, while creating a uh, virtual network security group disk yeah disk is as per the best practices keep a separate disk uh, for your operating system and data disk for uh, your data so that uh, in case of failure you can still have uh, still have the uh, your data available with you uh, yes there are charges uh, on the uh, on the disk so op uh, the operating system which usually get 127 GB I guess or smaller depending up to uh, rate on reason or the disk I mean it's based on what kind of disk you are using suppose you are using SSD that are uh, little premium or uh, that cost little higher side but if you standard if you use a standard SSD that is the hard drive it's a little lower price but uh, the performance there is a significant difference in performance also so these are some basic understanding that you should have uh, before creating a virtual machine so there are some additional cost that is associated to it as well so that impact your billing availability options so what is the availability options so uh, Azure offers several options to ensure the virtual machines always be available uh, so there are two kinds of uh, options that that as of now is available is availability zone a physical separate zone within the Azure regions to ensure a high availability so uh, guarantees the virtual machines connectivity at least one instance at uh, 99.99 percent for the time when you have two or more instance deployed across uh, one or more availability zone in the same uh, region so that is the uh, definition that you can uh, understand for availability zone uh, availability scale set so availability scale set is automatically scale a number of virtual machines based on the demand and ensure the applications remain responsive during the peak time so uh, it's basically uh, it's running two virtual machine in the same data center however in a different tracks suppose wrap one goes down in case of any patching activity or uh, taken by the Microsoft or a power failure then uh, the uh, machine running on rack 2 will take the load and uh, the operation will keep continuing so there will be no hamper to the uh, production server these options help you to uh, achieve at least 99.99 uptime to your virtual machines when you configure it correctly VM size and pricing let's talk about VM size and pricing so uh, the size of virtual machine is crucial as it impact the process power memory storage capacity and the network bandwidth as your charges based on on of these uh, size and operating system of the virtual machine the cost calculated per hour uh, for storage prices uh, for storage price is separate uh, depending up to the type of uh, amount of disk and space you have used uh, suppose you are using managed uh, managed disk like HHD or SSD uh, these are based on that so the price of the storage will be based on uh, how much storage capacity you are using and what kind of uh, storage you will be using 
uh, for your virtual machines suppose you are using uh, ssd premium then it will cost uh, you will get a higher performance and it will also cost much to your pocket azure managed disk are highly performance durable block storage designed to used uh, within azure virtual machines and azure vmware solution so microsoft offer four kind of disk storage options uh, the first one is ultra disk storage the second is premium uh, ssd the third is standard disk uh, standard ssd and the fourth is standard hsd so these you can use as per your requirement and uh, the uh, the billing is per hourly basis uh, for using these disk Let's talk about the custom image as well so custom image are like uh, marketplace images but uh, you create by them all self uh, you customize it i used to bootstrap the configuration such as preload application so these are not the images that microsoft create you created by yourself you loaded the applications as per your requirement and then you upload it to the uh, azure uh, for your use operating system distribution so uh, azure supports wide range of uh, wide range of linux and windows distribution so which you can find in azure marketplace and you can easily query available in images using cli powershell and reset api ensuring you get the right os on your virtual machine so that is the uh, operating system distributions so uh, cloud in it cloud I mean uh, Azure also provide Linux users for the Linux users uh, Azure support cloud in it uh, a tool that simplify the process of in initializing and configure your virtual machine at startup so this feature is available across most of the Linux distribution so make your deployment faster and more efficient so that was a basic uh, introduction about the uh, what is uh, Azure Virtual Machine. So now what we will do, we will going to deploy a virtual machine from a console and we'll see the basic understanding of it, deployment part. So we are in the console now. Now we are in Azure console, so we will try to deploy a virtual machine. So to deploy a virtual machines, uh, what you have to do is either you have to search for virtual machine like this or you can do you can go over here and find the virtual machines in the border so now uh, we'll click on create create virtual machines and it will open a page like this and uh, now you have to sub select a subscription that we already have a valid subscription so we have to create a resource group resource group uh, is a container where you are going to it it's i think like it's a container where you can provision your resources as per your requirement your 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 infrastructure as per your need as per your locations as well so uh, we'll create a rg called as vm hyphen resource group okay we will give a name vm hyphen test 01 let's give uh, we are going to create on east us2 Availability zone, uh, as you know, uh, we as per the reasons there are multiple availability zone within the same reason that you can choose. Uh, for now, what we are doing, we uh, and there are other options available in the do uh, drop down like uh, as your scale set and availability zone fault fault tolerance for like. So there will be a dedicated video on these two. For now, uh, we are not giving any preference, so we are choosing no in infrastructure and on the security type uh, we are going to select standard so there are three types of security that azure provide one is standard that is comes with the basic then we have a trusted that have zen 2 uh, and advanced uh, features like boot secure boot and uh, tpm that is trusted platform if you wanted to enable tpm that a virtual tpm can be enabled on the machines and third is confidential virtual machines so these are the top uh, confidential and uh, and they guaranteed that hardware based trusted uh, execution environment so uh, for now we will be choosing a standard one image uh, let's choose windows 11 pro only and uh, vm architecture 64 bit now the size of what would be the size now let's click on see all size and let's see what we all have so we have multiple as you see we have a multiple uh, uh, 
VM size in series so uh, we'll go with the basic one because we don't have uh, uh, we are just creating a let's create the most generic one so we we can go with uh, this one this is one CPU we are going with DS1 V2 uh, it's a general purpose uh, virtual machine so there are types of virtual machines that uh, you can provision as per requirement so we are using a general purpose machine so it has one CPU 3.5 GB of RAM uh, four data disk uh, and what is this this is mean that how many data disk that can be attached additionally to this virtual machine and these are the IOPS and if you run it for a month so it costs somewhere around uh, 3 4 uh, 1 6 9 that is in rupees let's select and we don't want to if you want to enable hyper mode you can enable it and if you whatever the uh, username and password let's give a password uh, like cloud admin okay we are to enable RDP because uh, and let's select it now let's click on disk option so it uh, it's give you the option that what is the disk size that you wanted to uh, provision it uh, what would be the disk type you want premium SSD standard SSD HSD so let's provision premium SSD okay now this is something that are going to cost you if you are going with the premium SSD these these are very expensive disk standard as are lower well standard uh, HSD are the, the normal disk so uh, choose wisely while configure it because even if your machine is shut down you have to pay the charges for the hard drive that is configured on your virtual machine so be very uh, wisely while configuring it now key management uh, let's keep it default as platform managed key there are some customer managed and uh, managed key that you have for the disk encryption you have you can choose these options and these are the options where you can actually uh, add your disk suppose I wanted to add additional disk you can create a disk if you have a, already an existing disk created then you can add it from here on the networking side uh, if you already have a virtual network a network created like hub and spoke in your environment then you can choose those if you don't have you can actually create one so like this it is creating the one so we are creating new one it will give an IP of 10.1.0.24 and it will assign a public IP you have an option that whether you wanted to apply a public IP or not because we do not have a best or any 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 services to connect to our machine so what we will do we will enable a we will enable a public IP to it now network security rules that you wanted to in board ports that you want to allow it we want to allow the RDP so that we can do uh, delete the public IP and when the VM is deleted let's click this option and if you have already a load balancer if you are creating a web applications and if you wanted to put behind the load balancer you can actually choose these options load balancer one let's move to management so in the management options it gives you an option where you can uh, add it to the identity systems uh, it can also enable you to add to identity and uh, stuff like that uh, you can automatically shut down your machine if you wanted to do that you can enable the backup if you already have a backup configured even if you not have configured you have an options to uh, create the rules or a recovery service vault during the creation itself so you can create it and you can put the backup over here we don't want to put the backup over here so because because test machine we are going to destroy it as soon after the lab is creation so for the backup there will be a dedicated video where we will talk about everything about backup so we are not going to enable the backup for now and let's go to the monitoring in case if you wanted to enable alerting and monitoring in your environment you can actually do it from here so we don't want any monitoring for now let's go to advance in case you wanted to execute any script or anything or execution any application during the installation those dot our custom data metadata can be uh, put it over here and post that there will be tags so by default in in production environment there are some couple of default tags that every uh, organization are are using it such like environment date of creation uh, maintenance window 
managed by and so on so these are very helpful in terms of identifying the applications owners uh, sometimes it is very important to uh, identify the cost also so the cost is also mentioned the tax so yeah there are a number of advantage of for the billing purpose also we put the tax so it is it is good to have tax now we will click create on review so it is going to give a glimpse that uh, what gonna be the uh, it, it, it a kind of summary that it is going to be give you that what is the subscription name what would be the virtual uh, machine name where the uh, resource group sorry where is the machine name where is the organization what zone that you have selected what the security type and so on you can review this and when you click on create uh, it will start deploying the machine you can see it's saying initializing deployment after submitting your initial deployment form it will start creating it and it usually take uh, around uh, 5 to 10 minutes or depending up to the resource uh, how much big of uh, how many disks you are trying to attach so uh, this is the uh, the page where it says that it is actually deploying if you wanted to see what are the things so now if you if you notice that over here it will give you the uh, uh, the details that what it is has done it actually so it has created a public IP it has created the energy it has created the VNet virtual network and it has created the interface as well now it is creating the virtual machines so let's wait for uh, three to four minutes and uh, once this machine is come up we'll try to connect to it so now uh, the machine is deployed you can see the uh, that uh, creator VM of Microsoft desktop Windows 11 has successfully uh, deployed so it will give you if you click on go resource uh, it will automatically uh, it will automatically take you to the resource where, where it has actually deployed so now you can see uh, it has created a virtual machine but still it is saying some agents are still running but that's fine so these are some basic details you can find it over here like what is the RG name what is the status of the machine what the location is uh, what is Windows uh, operating system what is the operating system actually what is the size what is the public IP VNets and some basic details let's copy the uh, IP address details from here and let's try to connect to it okay so there are some basic information that we have to accept and uh, after that we are into the virtual machine that we have recently created so now that's all about how you can ask what is actually a virtual machine and how you can deploy it on Azure in the next video we will talk about the uh, basic overview of over here and we'll take it from also we will talk about how to configure a disk how to apply uh, extension applications configuring uh, a configuration part and backup updates monitoring and so on thank you so much for watching this video if you are new to this channel please like and subscribe thank you so much bye bye